think I got one here. Look at that big book. Oh yeah. Big Kenai Saka right there. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Scooped that one right there. Got tired of losing fish, so I lifted that one. Good. All right, everybody, it is July 22nd. We had our first day of dip knitting yesterday. Got six sockeye. This kid did great. We're headed back out here on this Friday morning, back out to the north side of the Kenai Beach and probably over to the south side this afternoon. Instead of going down the bluff like we did last night, we're going to drive the truck out there onto the beach itself, which makes it a whole lot easier. And it means we get to bring the snacks, which is always good, right? All right, let's go. So yeah, the city of Kenai is not all that big. Only a few thousand people live in the immediate area. But here in July, this place explodes as thousands of people come down from Anchorage, from the Matsu Valley, from all over the state, just to come dip knitting. They camp out here at the baseball fields, all around town, campgrounds, in the Walmart parking lot, and even right here on the beach. And they do this for days at a time and it completely changes life here in the city of Kenai. Sometimes the locals complain about it a bit, but they do appreciate the business. So this is what you might call the annual Kenai traffic. Right, so we're gonna slide up here to the shack and pay for our daily parking permit. We'll use it here on the North Beach this morning and the South Beach this afternoon. Oh boy, I see boats out there. All right, so here on the North Beach, there's a massive mud flat that you can see out there, and that means it's low tide. So you see the boats going out. We're gonna wait here for about an hour, probably for that water to come up over this mud flat, and we'll fish it basically from that mud all the way up to in this area somewhere before we take a lunch break and then head over to the South Beach, which is over there, where we'll fish for the afternoon. So one of the major issues here in Kenai is something called the bluff. This is the barrier between the ocean and the city of Kenai, which sits in eastern portion on top of this bluff here. And this bluff has been eroding for basically ever. But you can see further down the bluff there, that structure's kind of held up down there. But right here is a portion of the bluff that has eroded. You can see it falling down right here. So they put this barrier up to kind of contain it and hold it in there because over the years that has eroded more and more and more to where now you can actually kind of see it there. Right there, this flag. People's backyards are literally falling off that cliff into the beach. And it's a, it's a major issue of concern. Now, the idea of dip netting can certainly be controversial, especially in the fishing community. But it's something that people need to understand about Alaska. Fishing is not just a pastime. It's not just a sport. Fishing is a part of life. People have literally lived in this spot right here for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and have fished these fish all the way up the Kenai River using more than just a fly rod. And every Alaskan today gets to participate in it. I get to, he gets to, and all these other people. And it's it's part of life. Hey, Jeremy. I saw that I saw that That's right. Also, you need to recognize living in Alaska is extremely expensive. And one of the benefits of being up here, in spite of the cost of living, is that we have access to high quality, wild, natural protein that we don't have to rely on Walmart or Target or anyone else to supply to us. We get to come out here and do the whole thing ourselves. We're catching these fish, we're netting these fish, we're bagging them, we're processing them. This guy's gonna be helping me do that tomorrow. We preserve it all ourselves and it lasts us for, for months. Some of this meat can last for years even. It's part of life in Alaska, being more self-sufficient than a lot of other places. And this is one of the key ways that a lot of Alaskans are able to do that and to supplement this lifestyle. And so we all that participate in this are extremely thankful for it while recognizing this is very unique. And it takes time for people who don't live here and don't get to do this and don't understand the sustainability that has been demonstrated by the state of Alaska for this fishery. It takes people a while to understand why we do this and how it's even legal and that's okay. But I hope that watching our videos helps you understand this better and can appreciate this extremely unique place that we get to live. You all right? All right, I'm gonna push out a little further, okay? 
Rule number one, don't get wet. Only come out as far as you're comfortable, okay? All right. So there's no real specific strategy as to where you're standing. You know, one guy's way out here. Most people are back here. Just kind of wherever you're comfortable with the wind and the waves, but some people feel the further out you go, the better. Some people are like, well, doesn't. Doesn't matter all that much. But uh, just had two guys right here to my right hit fish. Both of them were taking them back to the beach. One's right there, one's right there. That guy was really excited when he hit one. <laughs> so I'm just waiting my turn. Kids are right back there doing great. <laughs> He's a good boy. It's just part of the game. All you can really do is stand here and wait and hope that out of all of this space, all this water, those fish happen to hit your five foot section of it. Another one got hit down there. Oh, I think the kid's got one. We're gonna come back here and help him. <laughs> it's a long walk back through the mud. Big buck! All right. No, I did not. I just came to see yours. Look at that big buck. Oh yeah! Get him all twisted out here. Flip him over, pick him out. Uh, there you go. Whack him on the head right there where those lines are. Nice. All right, pop those gills. Let's go. Join the process. Get the knife. Cut the tail. Cut the tail first. No, no. Pull it up like that. Chop. Chop at it. All right, bud. Here we go. All right, fish number one in the bucket. What did the little guy say? Boom, baby. There you go. All right. Sockeye. Sockeye salmon. Okay. There you go. Yep. All right, dude, go for it. Good fish, man, good fish. Get back out there. All right, so here's something else about the dip net fishery. Some people come down here, especially tourists, and they see this. They see the carcasses of fish that have been caught, filleted, and dumped out here, and they, they, they think how wasteful this is. Well, this is just part of life. All these fish are gonna end up dying anyway, and all their carcasses end up down here anyway, whether they spawn or whether they get caught here. Also notice here, these have all been chewed on. All of the quote unquote waste from the dip netting that ends up here on the beach, of course, you know, it doesn't smell great, but all of this gets eaten by something, whether it's seagulls, eagles, or it gets out in the surf, it gets eaten by crabs, which are then eaten by halibut, which we go out there and catch and eat ourselves. None of this ends up getting wasted. It all becomes part of the ecosystem. So people need to understand this is a holistic system here. And yeah, it may not look great to you. It may maybe even stink, maybe be a little offensive to you, but this is part of life, and we are a part of it. So yeah, like I was saying, some people feel like you gotta go way out there to catch fish, but the kid was way back here. Got the first fish of the day while I was standing there like a bum out there in the mud. Oh yeah, seal's back right there, about 50 yards out. Sometimes the seals get annoying, but I find them entertaining. It also tells me, oh, he's got a fish on right there, right there. That also tells me that the fish are around here. If the seals are here, oh, if the seals are here, it means the fish are here. They're, they're chasing those fish. And they know a whole lot better than I do where they are. Oh, all right. Ugh. I'm not sure. Ugh. Oh, you all right? Can you help me up there? Yeah. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, these waves are not for you. No, no, we're going to take a break here. This is this a bit much. Here's a fish, you got one right there. Right there, just like that. 
Number two in the bucket. Oh yeah. So I generally do like to stand kind of further out from where everybody else is, kind of that main line. When it gets really busy out here, there will be hundreds, even thousands of people lined up, and everyone's trying to usually push out as far as they can. So all the nets will be lined up within you know, a, a five-yard span. And I really don't like to be in that particular span. I like to kind of get out away from it, kind of fish some fresh water out away from everyone else. But again, I've, I've stood there in lines and literally had the guy right in the middle of hundreds of other people get a fish. And it happens constantly. So just a matter of whether or not the fish are here, not so much about where you're standing, how far out you are. Maybe all those little things add up. But the biggest factor is, are the fish here? And right now, they're certainly here, there's just not a lot of them yet. So, hopefully that changes as the water comes up here to high tide. So some people might ask, how is it even possible for people, hundreds of people, even thousands of people to be standing on the edge of a single river and netting fish with these giant five foot nets? How is it even possible? Well, that's not all, you may not be aware. We are actually a very small fraction of the harvesting of fish on this river besides all of the actual fish sport fishermen up river you got the dip nets here at the mouth of the river then you've got the set netters out along the beaches all the way down south almost to homer and then past that you've got what are called the drift netters those are the boats that go out and drift with these large nets through the inlet and catch far more fish than all the people out here dip netting and most of that fish ends up getting sent down south to people like you well how is it even possible well the state of alaska has spent a ton of time and money studying this fishery and others and trying to make it sustainable. And while some aspects of Alaskan salmon runs are less than perfect right now, the king salmon here on the Kenai River are really struggling. And lots of people have opinions as to why. The sockeye are not really struggling. Now, depending on the year, you're gonna have a better run or a not so good run. 2019 was an excellent run, it was incredible. This year, it seems like it's going to be really, really, really good, but there's gonna be some fluctuation there. But the state of Alaska has demonstrated that at least for the sockeye, this is an absolutely sustainable way to harvest these fish, to make this available to the people of Alaska and to keep it going for years and years to come. People have literally been doing this for decades and decades. And the life cycle of these fish is only four or five years. So the Alaska Department of Fishing Game feels that as long as they reach their escapement numbers, that many fish getting past all the nets and up into the river system to spawn, then that provides enough population for a sustainable run that produces not just a million fish, but millions and millions of fish that are first harvested by the drift netters, then the set netters, then the dip netters, then all the sports fishermen. And this has gone on for literally decades. All right, this is just gonna be one of those days. Hey, Mark's got another one, there you go. Ugh. Just one of those days where we're jumping waves, that's just how it's gonna be. Oh no, oh no. Lost it. The goal for this morning was don't get wet. Well, I don't think it's gonna be possible at this point. It just we are gonna be wet. Yikes! Man, now you guys got the right idea with the wetsuits. We're getting wet anyway. Yeah. I, I started. I started this last year. Yeah. They're cheaper than uh than waders. Yeah, yeah. I've got a wetsuit at home. I'm gonna probably try that this afternoon because that's. Oh, oh, I think 
I got one here. I think I got one. Fish, oh, I do. Yep. Fish on. Fish on here, guys. Hey, got a fish here. Here we go. Just gotta watch that wave. Ugh. We don't lose him. Oh, man. This might be the smallest fish we've caught this season. What in the world? That fish is almost so small I don't want him. Look at that fish. Oh no, we're gonna keep him. But that is probably the smallest fish I've seen. That one's gonna be a little harder to pick out of the net here. Cause he's just the wrong size for my four and a half inch mesh. He's gonna get a little, a little more stuck. Right, there we go. So whacking the fish with the stick is probably the kid's favorite part of the whole ordeal. If you're out here watching the beach, you see a lot of kids out here. Whew, wet. It's generally the kid's job to whack the fish and pass them off to the family to put it in the bucket. That kid's no exception. They generally like that part of the job. ready to just take the waders and everything off just hang out here in my shorts so I'm almost getting as wet otherwise Him in the wave, the wave picked him up and flipped him out just like that. Bummer! Oh, there goes Mark with another one, man. He's getting it, man. Fishing seemed to have picked up a little bit, but these waves are getting bigger too, it seems. Oh, man. oh that one about took me down. It's just too big for the kid to be out there, so I'm actually gonna take his extension pole and put it on mine. So it's gonna be pretty long here, but hopefully that'll let me get past the waves a little bit better. Right there, all right. Got it. Okay, these waves, these waves are too big from losing fish. I'm gonna have to lift them. It sucks. Especially this longer pull, it's really gonna suck. Fish, oh, I do. Yep. Fish on. It's right there. Scoop that one right there. Got tired of losing fish, so I lifted that one. Good stuff. Ooh, here we go. Get that one out. You get out of here, fish. All right. Take care of that fish. There we go. Got 
guys aren't even bothering anymore. They're just they're just embracing the wet. <laughs> for some people to understand and they look at Dipna and they look at Alaskans out here doing this and they're saying things like that's not sportsman like that's not fair I've had people comment I'm a real sports fisherman I would never do something like that well I just hope you get from this video the reality of this it's, it's not just like shooting fish in the barrel all the time yeah you're using a great big old net but it's a big old ocean out there and that ocean sometimes fights back and it's downright dangerous at times. A friend of mine was the first responder to a man who's like, <laughs> on the South Beach right over there, and was the first responder to an older gentleman who had a heart attack while out here, and that, that, that man died right there in my friend's arms. And so this is not simply a matter of just catching fish. I was on the beach one time right over there when another gentleman got hit by a large wave and knocked him flat, took his net out and was going to suck him out before he was grabbed by some other people. It's, it's, this is not just about catching fish. This is life and people are willing to risk their discomfort, willing to spend their vacation, to face the danger of it all, to provide this food for their family. And that's what people need to understand about Alaska. Fishing's not just a sport here, it's life. And you're seeing it here. Let's see what we got. Alright. What do we got here? Pull them out. We got we got one, two, three, we got four, and I think. I think that's it. That's not great for a day of dip man, but that, gets, that right there gets us up to 10 dip net sockeye for the season so far. We're allowed 65, so we got 55 more to go if we want to get our limits. But we're going to go ahead and take a break here. We're going to run home, get some lunch, try and dry off, going to grab the wetsuit, and then we're going to hit the other side of the beach for the outgoing tide and see if we, can, if we can pull in a few more. All right, make sure to watch the video from yesterday. We caught six and the video that we're we'll going to be posting right up here as we head over to the other side of the beach here in Kenai, Alaska. For more adventures just like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. That's right. See you in the next video.